What can the area of squares tell you about the zeros of a quadratic function? In this lesson, you will learn how to graph a basic quadratic function by using the zeros of the function. Parabolas are symmetrical around a vertical line. Any two points on a parabola that are on the same horizontal line will be equal distances from the line of symmetry. Let's start with a square that has sides that are x feet in length. The area of the square can be represented by the function f of x equals x squared. To graph the relationship, we can make a table of values and plot the points. It's important to note that while we are only concerned with the positive values for the area of our square, the graph of the function is a parabola. There are times when you will only need to see the values for part of the parabola. But remember, if x can be any number, then the equation does make an entire parabola. This parabola is easy to graph from a table of values because the line of symmetry is the y-axis. Notice that this parabola has one x-intercept, which is also called a zero or one real root. This zero is also the vertex of the parabola. Its value represents the length of the side that makes the area zero square feet. Of course, there really isn't any square with an area of zero, so we have to imagine one for the sake of mathematics. Let's now make the side length of the square be x plus three feet long. This is the function in factored form that represents the area. If we multiply the factors, the function would be f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Looking at the table of values, there's no point where the f of x values change direction. To graph this function using a table of values, we will need to add more values of x until we know we have found the vertex. How can we make the graph from just a few key points instead of a guess and check type approach using a long table of values? We know that the x-intercepts are where the function f of x equals zero. So now we set x squared plus 6x plus 9 to zero and solve for x. Hmm, looks a bit more complicated than just f of x equals x squared. This is where the factored form of the polynomial is essential, because if one of the factors is zero, then the function will equal zero. This function has only one unique factor, which is x plus three. So setting that factor equal to zero gives us negative three as the only value for x that will make the function equal zero. And therefore, negative three is the x-intercept. Since there is only one factor, that factor is also the vertex. If the vertex were not on the x-axis, then the parabola will either have two x-intercepts or none due to its curved structure. The line of symmetry is x equals negative three because the vertex is on the line of symmetry. The other point that is easy to calculate is the vertical intercept. When x equals zero, the parabola will cross the f of x axis. To find this intercept, you can use either the expanded form or the factored form of the function. The vertical intercept is zero comma nine. This point is three horizontal units from the line of symmetry. So the corresponding symmetrical point will be three horizontal units on the other side of the line of symmetry. With the vertex and two points symmetrical on the parabola, we can now construct a rough graph of the parabola. What do f of x equals x squared and f of x equals the quantity x plus three squared have in common? They are both perfect squares, just like one, four, nine, 16, etc. They each have one factor that is multiplied by itself. Polynomials that can be factored into perfect squares have only one factor and therefore only one zero. And this one zero is also the vertex, which is on the x-axis. In this lesson, you have learned how to draw a basic graph of a quadratic function by using the zeros of the function.